suggest that there's really nothing new to going on. So if you started with World War II, and this has happened before the government or people made it the Japanese, and it was the Catholics, and the Italians, and the Jews, and the Mexicans, for God's sake, now, and the blacks, or whatever the new movement is. I guess saying all of this to ask a question. The question is, what is your organization doing to, to humanize Muslims? That's probably the answer to this. We're not going to, this is going to happen again. It's going to be some other women. Today, it's the Muslims. Yeah. What is your organization doing to humanize the Muslim community so we can get past that ridiculous That's right. And, and I think that was one of the primary, primary reasons for our organization to come into existence, that, you know, not only that we wanted to gather up all the libertarian Muslims and then come hang out with you cool kids, right? But also to even spread the ideas of liberty and the non-aggression, because in Quran Allah it says, Why karafi deen? And we say there's no approach to deen. So what we're doing is some of us are writing books like W. Bar Barker's book that I'm holding right here, The Voluntary Islam. It's a very libertarian-ish book. And um, so to answer your question shortly, we're doing everything in our power and the limited resources that we have to spread the ideas of liberty and you know non-aggression and so forth in the in the community as best as we can. We're reaching out to everybody, right? We anytime there is an Islamic event anywhere, like a holiday, right? We're there. We're talking to our own people. We're, the thing is here today, and I'm so glad you know, I, Free State Project. I owe, owe it to them. I mean, Free State Project. And I cannot think, thank them enough because my life, my personal life has transformed because of Free State Project. Before that I was nobody, I didn't know anything, you know. Uh, but Free State Project has taught me so much. You know, once I learned about that and then I came here to Porcupine Freedom Festival and then the ideas of liberty that I learned here and then my, my whole journey of, you know, educating myself to this route, it, it, it has been an amazing journey. But our presence here, we're, I know I'm preach, preaching to the choir, really. I know that. But that's what we're doing. We're, we're not trying to miss any you know, platform where we could be to say we've been there. Where did you go to school? At uh, University of Maryland. Moving from Maryland. Go ahead. If I could add on to your answer to this man's question as to, as to what your organization is doing, I mean, I believe that at least the last two pork fests, you've given, you've offered free meals to anyone at Fork Fest, That's right. so I mean it's a very small thing at, on the local level, but um, I know that uh, that that was the first I ever became aware of your organization is that people at Fork Fest, which is the other event that the Free State Project puts on, and I mean it pains me to say this, but I know Free State Project participants who are rapidly anti-Islam and are uh, are fully in support of what Trump is doing and. Um, are afraid of Sharia law being instituted on all Americans and, and all of that. So these guys are, are just saying, hey, come on over. We will give you a free meal. Look us in the eye, meet us, talk to us, which um, is a good start. They had a VP candidate for Libertarian. That's life. right. Cool. That's <laughs> right. Will Cauley, our national director for Muslims for Liberty, he ran as a, those of you who don't know, as a vice president with um, Daryl Perry. So uh, yes, absolutely. And I think just to wrap things up, uh, one more important thing is, you know, for us to reach out to you guys is because our voice is out there. So, you know, we could use your help as well. There are a lot of concepts uh, that um, you know are misunderstood by the national, you know, the populace in this country or elsewhere, right? For instance, Sharia people talk about Sharia all day long, they bash it or they don't bash it, whatever. But do they really understand what it really is? Do the jihad word is thrown around like a million times in a day, especially when you hate Muslims, right? Similar things, right? Like taqiyya, like hiding or lying. We're accused of lying. You really Google the word P, uh, liars in Quran, the number of times Allah has condemned liars, right, is probably <laughs> outweighed by any of, like it's just, Rampant. Every chapter has it, like many times. So, no, we're not liars. We're here to tell you that. And we're also, we, wa we want you to have a dialogue with us. Don't just hate. If you want to hate, have a reason, real reason, not just, you know, the Bible. If there are any Christians in there, they could probably appreciate this. The Bible uh, in Matthew's, God said, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for thou shalt be called children of God. And, and we have the same, same attitude and message. We just want love and peace with each other. We're the same people, we're, we're known for we're the color of skin, that's all. Or, or, or faith. In some cases, the color, like in Keta, we'll call you the white American, right? Yeah, or Dadi, yeah, or Dadi, or many others, many others. I mean, most of the Muslims for Liberty lead, I'm actually honored to be here on their behalf. But, you know, I don't deserve it, but um, thanks to Wokali and the rest of the directors. Give me one second. I just want to say I was at the National Convention and Will was very well received there, and now in the back rooms on the Facebook groups, you know, Trump's doing something crazy. We need a Will Coley quote to make a meme and put yeah. it on the Facebook page. That's great. That's yeah. lovely. That's so great to hear. And yeah. so they're looking. They're looking for more. You know, definitely let them know. Thank the chairs you. love you guys. Yeah, yeah, reach out to us, please. Go ahead. Uh, sure. So I just wanted to really ask you, based on your experience, I, I don't know how many different types of groups you speak to, if you ever have uh, interactions. So as a libertarian group. Like you mentioned right from the outset, we're, we are going to be more sympathetic, and I would, I would hope, uh, to, to your plight and what have you. I have a Jewish background, and definitely a family going back you know, through the Holocaust, which makes me a very pro-gun person on my end, so that's an entirely different argument for a different day, which uh, you clearly have some relation to. But my question was really related to if you have, what kind of reception you have in uh, you know, other groups that you do speak to them. Mostly, you'd be surprised actually, mostly well received. There is actually a group, uh, a Tea Party group in Lakes Region. And one of our guys, extremely broken English, but a very, very kind, good hearted person, an immigrant from Iraq, spoke there. Really well received, you know, to our surprise. So, in some cases, yes, there are bigots out there, right? They would get on you and scream in your face, and we try to avoid that. But most of the time, people are in, people get in shock. It's like, well, I thought you guys believed this, or you believed that Muhammad was God, or something like that, right? And you would say, no, 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 not at all. And then, you know, if, and if, you, if you just open up the dictionary in front of them, and it says jihad, I mean, literally, in any which way you turn, it means actually struggle, or uh, in those terms, they would be like, well, well, what's the word for killing them? And then you'll say, well, actually, that's kital. Totally different word in, in, in Arabic. Like the word, you know, for killing is or murder is completely different. It's nothing to do with that. So, so they they usually scratch their heads. It's like, hmm, okay. So that's that's that's, that's my whole point. Right here. I'm right outside and on the other side in the exhibitor hall, and I have a lot of information. And it's good to actually just take some of that. Don't you don't have to read it today. You don't have to read it tomorrow. But when you may need it. You know, you may have a family member who might turn the dark side to the dark side, right? <laughs> and if that ever happens, you know, I, we, we, we don't ask for anything. You know, we, we, we would defend you with our lives. We the, the libertarian Muslims at least, right? Or the Muslims, the Muslims that I represent, right? The majority, right? We will defend our Christian brothers and Jewish brothers and sisters with our lives, right? Whether it be against ISIS or any other would do that. But it's good to know this our stuff because it's the current thing, right? It's the everybody is so scared of us, right? But they just don't know. And to op to, to help open the dialogue, it, it, it helps to have some information on handy. Just hand it to them and say, hey, if you really think they're just bad people, I know a group we can go talk to. Just that's it. That's all you gotta do. I think, uh, sorry to follow up, but do you think that perhaps, um, I know from one of the, the things that at least to me most appeal, is most appealing about the libertarians as a whole is that really the draw is there's this alleviation of human suffering, suffering when we focus on, you know, we're race blind, we're more interested in economics. We notice that, honestly, like this little, you know, Pakistani kid is not going to want to just like kill these white people, but if you blow up his parents in his whole neighborhood, Maybe all of a sudden his motives are going to change. He won't want to go and have a productive economic career. A little bit. My point was the so, war. I think it's at the core of what's happening. It's yes. the war, and it's 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 visible. It's amazing. We're having wars, multiple wars. And the Americans don't know this. They really don't. Ask them about Yemen. Because it was a democratic president. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, all countries or anything like us, you know, like New Zealand gives a crap what the U.S. says, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm, I, are they trying, is, and when I say they, they then those won't leave us alone. I, I'm wondering, who are they? Is it the Pentagon? Is it the banks? Is it the military industrial, we need to make money, make the bonds? I mean, is, I mean, is it the, the banking? I'm wondering, from your perspective, and maybe Islam as a whole, who do they see in Ramping this up is churning this, other than Breitbart. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you said that because I actually made some cards that uh, I was going to say something about, but I was like, I don't know if they'll be relevant. But since you asked the question, um, there are a few names I can mention, like General Michael Flynn, uh, Steve Bannon, and then those of you know who don't know, Frank Gaffney, Center for uh, Security Policy. So. This person is has been like completely like anti you know like Sharia you know creating fear in the hearts of people about the you know conspiracy conspiracy theories about the Sharia law and whatever. Um, someone named Walid Fars he's a he used to be a Lebanese minority militia and was involved in the civilian massacre in the 1980s. And then everybody should know Pamela Geller Geller whatever her name is. And you know, of course, and then Rudy Giuliani, and uh, all these people are advising the, you know, the, the president now, and every single one of them has ties to somehow one way or the other, completely anti-Islam, anti-Sharia. <coughs> Why? I mean, who do they represent? I don't. I, apparently, my guess is as good as yours. Really, I have no idea. I don't know where this hate comes. Well, we could waterboard them and find out. Did <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that on my own? Just for the just for the. Just for the record, not a person, but yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. But I think, you know, Nelson pointed out that, that, look, there's been a continuity through time, right? And I think it's an economics piece. I think even in World War II, you know, some people definitely hated the Jews, but there was also a serious economic depression just prior, right? And so a lot of times, a scapegoat alleviates the base that. So that's going to be the ongoing issue that we're going to continue to have, the boogeyman. And so I think, as libertarians, if we can continue to focus on economic liberty, economic, and the human suffering that that will inevitably alleviate, then people move away from race and move away from those differences, and they move up together. Yeah, I think that's a solution. I'm old enough. Am I the oldest guy? I'm not the oldest. But um, I've been heavy duty in uh, activist politics since '88, so it's been like what 28 years. After a while, you start to see a pattern. You know, there's a, there's a cycle of this stuff. And the thing that, that I remember when I graduated high school in 79 was when the Iran cost, uh, hostage crisis kind of thing was going on. We have uh, Reagan takes over from Carter. Then you had the uh, Iran Contra. You had I mean, all this stuff, and it was always Iran. Well, Iran was our buddy when the Shah was there. And they, oh, we love us some Iran. Yeah. We'd be oppressive as whatever the hell they could do as long as they were our buddy. Yeah. Well, you can see that the pattern has been whoever is not in our control economically, economically. whoever's not in the banking system, whoever's got their own thing. Gaddafi says, we're going to go gold base, dinar, dinar, dead. Saddam says, we're going to take euros <laughs> or gold for oil, dead. Yeah. Iran opens their own bourse, you know, kind of trading, and you know, they can use a different currency, and India gives them hundreds of millions of dollars in gold to get oil. Oh, they want them dead. I mean, so there is a common theme here. It's like I'm going, is it the military thing? Is it the banking? The banking that runs the military? I mean, it sure as hell ain't up. That doesn't explain it all. I'm sorry? That, that doesn't explain, I think you're right. But it doesn't explain it Because right now there's the whole thing about Mexicans. And Mexico's economy is definitely dependent on the U.S. economy. Right? And so you, you can start parsing these out. I think you're dead on to a point. But that doesn't explain all of the historical nature for all of you. There's something more to it. But you have to demonize Mexico. It's an intelligent education of economics, though, I think. Because with Mexico, from a really low level, you can be like, oh, they took our jobs. 
from a more intelligent level, you can realize, oh wait, no, free trade benefits everybody. Trade is a two-way street. But you have to, you have to demonize Mexico uh, on the jobs, but also on the war on drugs. And there is so much money in that, and we're oh, back to the economy said, again. Trump just said, he goes, he goes, if you don't take care of your bad guys and the cartels in Mexico, the U.S. military will. <laughs> Ooh, I feel all kinds of fuzzy about that. They say the Chicago, though. We have time for one more question, so uh, great. Go ahead. I'm an immigrant who's a U.S. citizen, and, and now this is your country, and now things are shifting this way. How do you feel about, you know, me, I myself have considered moving to some other country just as a backup plan or whatever. <laughs> um, but I still think the U.S. is number one. What do you think about? I mean, you know, and it'll get better. You know, I'm hoping. I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I think it'll get better. I think. Uh, I think we have. I'm a, a you know optimist. We bottom out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely, there is. You know, there is. There, 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 and I'm just going to take one minute. Um, I started to say, I tell you guys a story about this Iraqi uh, militia guy, and um, he said something about, you know, it, I was having a conversation with the local Iraqis, and I asked them if I was to go alone out in the streets, what would happen to me? And allegedly, they told him that they, the people would just kill you, and they'll torture you, and they'll kill you. And so he got sworn in, he says, you know, or um, questioned them back, and he says, so what if, so why, if you would kill me in your country? Your ordinary citizens will kill you, kill me in your country. Why would I allow you in my country, right? Big difference. The question should have been asked. This is you kill three million Iraqis, five million are orf uh, children are orphans. You expect what do you expect? So the the answer to the terrorism is blow back. You see what I mean? Um, yes, America is one of the best places to live in the world. There's no question about it, and it has as he mentioned, economics, right? People come here because of economic freedom, whatever that means right now, right? Um, I don't have any plans of moving anywhere, but if, you know, push, come to shop, uh, I can always go back. Yeah. All right, well, let's so thank the speaker. Go through. And, and stick around for our next session, Legislating for Liberty.